it's fair to say, without access to any relevant data, that people who do no regular exercise are less likely to be involved in an accident in a gym than those who exercise regularly. But we certainly wouldn't conclude that not doing regular exercise is good because it decreases your chances of being injured in a gym. And I certainly don't think it would be hard to prove that people who drive regularly are more likely to be involved in car accidents than those who don't. And while there are some people who really do avoid driving for this reason, nobody would seriously argue that drivers are inherently reckless people who ignore the risks of driving. But these conclusions are essentially no different to the conclusions of a study just published into the link between injuries in car accidents and vaccine status. Specifically, this study of over 11 million Ontario residents claims to show a substantial increased risk of being injured in a car accident if you're unvaccinated compared to if you're vaccinated. And it lists the possible causes or explanations as a distrust of government or belief in freedom that contributes to both vaccine preferences and increased traffic risks and misconceptions of everyday risks, faith in natural protection, antipathy towards regulation, exposure to misinformation, or other personal beliefs. In other words, the unvaxxed are a bunch of ignorant conspiracy theorist trolls who need to be educated into why the COVID vaccination will stop them dying in a car crash. Of course, unlike studies showing risk of vaccine adverse reactions, any study like this claiming to show the negative impact of being unvaccinated gets quickly picked up by the mainstream media. Before digging into some of the details of the study, Igor Chudov in his Substack article notes one of the most obvious problems with it in his headline and in the points below these two pictures. During the period of the study, the vaccinated were the ones more likely to be driving and that's not just because they weren't too scared to leave their houses like those so afraid of Covid that they also agreed to the experimental gene therapy. It's because unlike the vaccinated, the unvaccinated in Canada couldn't use trains, planes or even buses to travel. Cars were their only option. But there were other truly bizarre limitations with the study. For example, contrary to what was implied by the paper's title and all the media reports that picked up on it, the study considered not just drivers involved in car accidents, but passengers and pedestrians also. In fact, it turns out that out of the total of 6,682 casualties, there were almost as many pedestrians as there were drivers, meaning their conclusions also imply that unvaccinated pedestrians are at greater risk than vaccinated pedestrians, which again is actually not so surprising given that the unvaccinated were far more likely to be out walking than the vaccinated. Now, as Thomas V, one of the commenters on Ivor's Substack noted, and it's a problem with all COVID vaccination studies that I've discussed at length, a person would have been considered unvaccinated in the first 14 days after vaccination, which of course is also when there could be a genuine causal relationship between vaccination and an accident, but in the opposite way to what the study authors wanted. And as the study period was only one month, it would only have required a small proportion of the total casualties to be misclassified in this way for the difference between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated to vanish. Also bizarrely, all deaths at the scene of an accident, estimated to be 42, were excluded. Now since only 8 deaths were included, that means 84% of the most serious outcomes were excluded from the study. Since only 550 of the total casualties admitted to the hospital, that's also a big chunk of the major casualties excluded. And maybe most importantly of all, accidents that may have resulted from a vaccine-induced sudden death or heart attack were conveniently excluded. He also notes that the source data is not available, so none of the work can be verified. Now, in a Twitter thread, Claire Craig pointed out some additional critical statistical flaws in the data. They used two sets of data, the number of people presented to hospital after a traffic accident and the number of people in the government vaccination database. Nowhere do they talk about people who are not in the system. All those people who are not in the system and remain healthy are not counted. Accidents in the vaccinated are measured as a proportion of those vaccinated. 
and accidents in the unvaccinated are measured as a proportion of those unvaccinated in the system. Now, as I've shown extensively, and the links are below the video here, we know how unreliable the estimates of the proportion unvaccinated really are. Countries like Canada inevitably underestimate this proportion and hence overestimate the rate of incidence of any type among the unvaccinated while underestimating the rate among the vaccinated. And this could be casualties in car accidents as here, but also COVID cases, hospitalizations and deaths. Claire also pointed out how ludicrous the summary results are. The results are captured in this table. This is a standard way of showing the relative risk for each of the different categories of people. If there's no difference in risk between the vax and the unvaccinated for a particular category, say the age 18 to 13 years, then the risk ratio would be one. And so the dot should be centered on one with the horizontal line through it representing the confidence interval. If the dot is to the right of one, then this means there's a greater risk for the unvaccinated, and if it's less than one, this means a greater risk for the vaccinated. So for example, we can see that in the 18 to 39 age category, not only is the risk greater in the unvaccinated, but because the line is very short and all to the right of one, the result is statistically significant. But most of the points fall on essentially a vertical line well to the right of one. So as Claire notes, no matter which way you chop the data, the risk is apparently increased by about the same amount. The vertical line at point one should be picked up and lifted across to where all the dots are. You still see an increased risk for people with dementia who are not vaccinated and highly likely to have been pedestrians. You also see a lower risk for the old those with diseases of the old and those with COVID, also women generally. Using their same methodology, you could estimate that the unvaccinated had a higher rate of anything, giving to charity, recycling, buying the most Christmas presents, whatever you want when the levels are actually the same, because the denominator, which is based on the population estimate of proportion unvaccinated, is artificially small.